Why hello there everybody, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. So today we are doing an experiment. We are going to see whether or not I'm able to sell over 125 DIY recipes on Nickazon. It's ambitious, I know, so let's just get into it. One more thing, if Nickazon is something that you aren't familiar with and you'd like to find out about what it's all about and how it works, I've made a beginner's guide to using this amazing fan-made site, uh, which I'll pop up in the cards and down below if you're interested. Okay, so while I chat about the process of this experiment, you'll be seeing clips of all the beautiful people who wanted to buy the DIYs I've listed. So I don't know about you guys, but since the very start of the game, I've saved nearly every extra DIY I've found, whether that be from bottles on my beach, from villagers who were crafting, or very rarely the extra seasonal DIY I found in balloons. For so long, I've been moving them around my island. At one point, I kept them in the basement of my house, but the happy Home Academy was really mad at me for doing that and they kept giving me bad ratings. Then I moved them to my beaches and rocks. But if you guys have been following my channel and the progression of my island over the past month, you may be aware of the fact that I've just kicked off the process of remodeling my island. So I felt that now, after letting them build up for nearly a year, it was time for them to go. Now, I could have easily just sold them to Timmy and Tommy, but I thought it would be fun to try and make some more money out of this and to see whether whether or not it's something that you guys can also make a substantial amount of money out of if you're in a similar situation to me and also whether or not the effort put into selling them all on Nickazon could actually be considered worth it for the value you get in return. Just for a bit more context as we go through this, I had a big mix of DIY recipes, including very basic ones that you actually get at the start of the game to a few of the recipes you could have got in balloons all throughout winter, as well as a bunch of what could be considered mid-range DIYs, like some of the ones from the Ironwood set, for example. So we'll circle back around to my findings and the results of this experiment in a few minutes, but first let's chat a bit about my methodology. Professor Apricari is in the house today, and if we're doing an experiment, you can bet your bottom dollar that we are going to be doing it right. So the first thing I did was separate all the DIYs into categories. The rough ones I went for were wood-based ones, like the log stool, fruit, bamboo, ironwood, iron generally, like the iron closet, flower, shell, miscellaneous, which I split into nature related and general miscellaneous, and special DIYs, or ones which I thought would sell fast. These included the golden slingshot, two gold armors, and some of the iceberg ones from winter. Listing all the items did not take me long, and when I first listed them all, I got a wave of offers. This made me think that this experiment would not take me too long to complete. This is also why the original question I wanted to test was how much money can I make from selling over 125 DIY recipes on Nookazon? I'll talk more about this later, but as you may have seen from the thumbnail and title of this video, the parameters we're testing kind of shifts down the line. Let's just say it was ambitious of me to assume that I could sell all of them at all. So I absolutely did not sell all of these in one sitting. Spoiler guys, I didn't actually manage to sell them all at all, but we'll talk more about that later. I spent about an hour to a few hours of nearly every night for about two weeks, relisting the items and selling or sitting around and waiting for offers to come in. I think it was around the 1st of March that the Mario items were added to the game. The warp pipes were an absolute game changer as up until this point, I'd been running back and forth from my airport to the area where I was keeping my DIYs, which was behind my new shopping district if you're familiar with the layout of my island. So these pipes massively cut down the amount of time I spent running around between trades. Let's now move on to the findings of this experiment as well as some of the issues I encountered throughout the process. This was the first time I've attempted to sell so many things at once on Nookazon. I've sold things individually or a few at a time, but never this many at once. I was definitely expecting to be scammed at least once, but surprisingly, it did not happen. The first time I was suspicious of it happening was when somebody offered half a million bells for a boomerang DIY. 
someone also offered me just under half a million bells for a wooden mini table. As it turns out, some people are just extremely generous, but on the other hand, from my previous Nicks on a video, I know a few people commented that they had been scammed while making far fewer trades than I was, so I think I was quite lucky in the fact that I was not scammed this time round. Along these same lines, it was interesting to see how large of a difference there were in what people were willing to pay for the same item. I had a good few duplicates of the same DIY, for example, the wooden end table. While the first person purchased one for 130,000 bells, another person offered 1,000 bells. I think this highlights how every DIY is valuable to someone. I've definitely been there. The scarecrow and barrel DIYs were ones which eluded me for a long time until I eventually caved and bought them on Nookazon. It's sod's lore, I guess, that those just so happen to be two of the DIYs I was selling today. But at the same time, I had a few duplicate DIYs that people paid very similar if not the same prices for, such as the iron hanger stand where both buyers paid 10,000 bells. One problem I kept encountering was the fact that my listings would get buried nearly straight after I posted them, by others who were posting them one minute to even a few seconds straight after I was. With how common some of these DIYs were, it's not surprising that this was happening. If it weren't for this, I may have been able to sell more DIYs or even completed the experiment, but I guess that's also just a testament to how popular and amazing the Nuxon site really is. So finally, to the results you guys are here for. After working on this experiment for about two weeks, I decided to call it. Sadly, I did not manage to sell all the DIYs. I sold 58 in total, so just under half. As the course of this experiment reached the one week point, I realized that I needed to change the thesis, hypothesis, whatever you call it, to be whether I could actually sell all of these DIYs. And as my results have shown, I couldn't. I don't doubt that I would have been able to had I kept going and relisted the DIYs much more aggressively. But what can I say? It's university essay submission season and I just didn't have the time to do that right now. Even though I didn't necessarily complete it, I had a lot of fun with this experiment. I encountered so many lovely, generous players along the way. I'll be honest, the amount I did manage to sell took a lot longer than I expected it to. Did I buy off more than I could chew? Maybe. But maybe I just don't have the stamina for selling at this scale on Nookazon because I noticed that there was a lot of dead time for waiting for people to either make an offer or to send you their dodo code. So sometimes I'd be working on recording for an hour or two and only make three or maybe five trades, which when I had over a hundred to do, it just wasn't gonna happen at the rate at which I was going. So from the 58 DIYs I sold, I made a grand total of 5,708,000 bells. In order to test whether this was something that you guys could replicate for yourselves, I did not publicize the fact that I was recording for YouTube anywhere as I did not want to sway the results in any way. However, so people who were aware of the fact that I was filming and that their trade may have been filmed and put into this video, I did put a note in my bio. This note did not include the details of why I was filming, just in case that, that would have influenced people to pay more or anything like that. A few lovely people I traded with did ask for my channel name, so if you're watching this, hello, and thanks so much for your help in this experiment. So for one last question, is storing up all of your leftover DIYs and selling them on Nookazon worth it? I think the answer to that depends on a few factors. Firstly, how much time do you have? Like I mentioned, this video took me so long to make because of how long the selling process took me. If you're looking to make a lot of bells, I think that selling turnips to other players online is your quickest bet. I have a tutorial in which I walk you guys through the process of selling turnips online if that's something that you're curious about. However, one thing I learned throughout this experiment is that some people just love interacting with others and being generous to other players, so if that's something that you get enjoyment out of, this is a no-brainer. Second, although I found that some people were willing to pay extortionate amounts for some of the more basic DIYs like the wooden mini table, I think that some of the DIYs are more likely to sell than others, such as ones from the ironwood set, the iron ones generally, like the iron garden table and chairs for example, or just the more popular ones like the wooden stool which is so popular for cottagecore, 
or the barrel or other ones like that. And of course, any of the seasonal DIYs are always worth keeping to sell. The ones I noticed which really weren't selling were the fruit DIYs and some of the very basic wood ones like the wooden block series. What I mean is there may be more worth in keeping and selling some DIYs than others. I think that if you're wanting to sell some of your spare DIYs, it's best to sell them individually or a few at a time. So as you get them in, try and get rid of them immediately rather than letting them build up for as long as I did. It was quite overwhelming to gather them all up, to organise them, then to list them and keep track of who was buying what during the selling process. For a final note on whether you could repeat this experiment for yourself, again, because of the massive variation in what some players were willing to offer for certain items, it's very difficult to tell whether or not you'd make the same amount of bells as I did. So with this all being said, it was really fun getting to meet some other players and finally shifting some of these gosh darn DIYs. What I'll do with the leftover ones, I'm not sure yet. But if this video inspired you to try selling some of your own extra DIYs on Nookazon, I'd be really interested to hear about how you get on. If you have any suggestions for other experiment type videos you'd like me to try, whether that be on Nookazon or not, I'd love to hear from you. I hope you guys enjoyed this somewhat different video from me. Happy trading and I'll see you again soon.